Welcome back to the second video of the Gemini Web API course. Make sure you're watching this on learnjavascript.online slash AI slash Gemini, which is also linked in the description below, as there you will find all the code snippets, all the updates, and the starter template. In this video, we're gonna install the Gemini SDK or the Gemini library. We're gonna make a basic response, and then we're gonna take a look at how streaming works, which is gonna be very useful for longer responses. Now let's start by installing Gemini in our existing project. I'm gonna cancel the server and install Google Generative AI. Now we have it installed and I'm gonna run the server again. And on this URL, you can see that it's also supported for Python, Node.js, that's important if you wanna do the API request from the backend, some of the front end. But this is again, most likely gonna change and update in the future. Now, we already import the API key over here and we're gonna now import the Gemini web app. We're gonna import the Gemini Google Generative AI from Google Generative AI. So, and we're gonna create new gen AI equals new Google Generative AI, and we're gonna pass in the API key. And that should be gen AI. And then we're gonna get the model that we're gonna use. So that's gonna be gen AI dot get model, get generative model, and we're gonna provide the model name to be Gemini Pro. At the moment, Gemini Pro refers to Gemini dash 1.0 dash Pro. In the future, we're probably gonna have Gemini 1.5 or other ones. Again, check out the documentation or the website where this course is hosted and you'll see the other options. And we're gonna make a basic response. We're gonna ask the model to generate content and we're gonna provide the prompt. And the prompt is gonna be, write me a two-line JavaScript poem. And this returns a promise, so we can await it. And then uh, we can save it in a response and result. And then we can console log the result and then it has a key response where we can see the response from the generative AI. So let's go back, open DevTools, console, reload, and then take a look. This is the response and we have the text over here. So to extract the text, we I was missing the text. And this is the response, console log hello world, a spark ignites the digital void hums. That's how we send a basic request to this model. So the more complex the model, the more context we give it, you will see that we can do achieve more com complex things. But for now, you can think of this as being like any other GPT, like how to make a cake, and then it's gonna give you the instructions. But uh, the benefit of it, because we're using it from the code, we can actually extract context from the page, you can do more complex things. And that's what we are interested in. As you can see, I'm on a VPN, so things are pretty slow. And yeah, and here we get the response for the cake. Pretty long, but that's because the prompt was pretty generic. We can also say we can set a limit or restriction or like we can say what kind of ingredients we have, just like you would use any other GPT. Now, as you can see here, now we got a really long response and it took a while. And this is where it would be beneficial to show you that we can also use streams. I'm gonna close the sidebar and comment this out and we're gonna rewrite this but using streams. The benefit of a stream is that we will get chunks of the response and we can show them as they arrive. This is exactly what happens when you talk to ChatGPT or Gemini, you, you get chunks of text as they arrive. So for that, we're gonna create a result and we'll await model.generate content stream. We pass in the prompt, how to make cake. And the difference here is that we will get back a result.stream but this stream is iterable and we can use the for await syntax to read a chunk of the stream. And then we can write console log chunk dot text and we read the text over here of each chunk. And now you can see here, as they arrive, they are being console logged. And you can also have like a variable response and then append to it the chunk And then you will have a variable response at the end that contains all of the answer. Great work. In this video, we installed the Gemini API. We sent a basic response with a basic prompt, and then we took a look at streaming. We're not gonna use streaming in this predictive support functionality because we're only getting back a short answer. But 
maybe for a use case you need it, and that's why we covered it. In the next video, we're gonna use AI Studio to create, fine tune, and test the prompt that we're gonna use for the predictive support functionality. And we're gonna integrate this prompt in the app and you're gonna see how we will implement the predictive support functionality. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.